OK, to start doing this problem, just draw a cuboid. And they give us that the base of the cuboid is a square one, and they say the sides are of length x. But they don't give us the height. So introduce the letter h for the height. And what we've got to do is find h in terms of x. They don't tell us this, but that's what we have to do in problems like this. And to do that, they tell us that the volume of the cuboid is 8 centimeter cubes. OK, I'll just write it as v equals 8. And to find the volume of a cuboid, you'd have to find the area of the base, which would be x times x, which is x squared, and then multiply it by the height, h. So in other words, we have x squared times h equals the 8. Now remember I said that we need to express h in terms of x. So if we rearrange this equation to make h the subject, we would have h equals 8 over x squared. Now, we need to find the surface area. So the surface area I'm going to call by the letter A. And the total surface area will be the sum of the areas of all the faces of the cuboid. So if we start with the base, the base area okay, will be x times x, x squared. And the top will have exactly the same area as well. So that will be two lots of x squared. And then we would add to that the area of this face, which would be x times h. And in fact, there's four of those faces all around the sides here that are exactly the same. So that would come to 4xh. Now what we do next is we substitute this value for h, 8 over x squared, into this h here. So if we do that, we will get that this becomes 2x squared plus 4x times 8 over x squared. And if we simplify this, we find that we get that the area is equal to 2x squared plus and 4 eighths of 32. And then this x cancels with one of the x's in x squared to give you an x underneath here. And so therefore, we have that the surface area of the cuboid, A, is given by this equation. And that was the first part of the question. Now in the second part, we have to differentiate this expression. So to differentiate this, what I'll do is get this ready for differentiating, because this term isn't in a uh, an appropriate form. So what I can do is write this as 2x squared and think of this term as 32 times 1 over x. And 1 over x is written as x to the power minus 1. So this becomes 32x to the power minus 1. So to differentiate this, dA by dx, differentiating 2x squared gives me 4x. And differentiating 32x to the minus 1, I multiply the power by the 32, and that becomes minus 32. Drop the power by 1, and that's x to the power minus 2. It's not a good idea to leave this with a negative power, so I'm going to rewrite that as 4x minus 32 times what is essentially 1 over x squared. So 32 times 1 over x squared gives 32 over x squared. So that is dA by dx. Now for the next part, okay, we want to find out what the minimum surface area would be. So let me just give you a little background to how we do that. What we have, OK, is essentially a graph. OK, we can think of a graph of how the area changes with respect to the base dimensions x. And if I was to draw a graph for A, given by this equation here, and how it changes with respect to x, 
that graph would look something like this. Okay, it would come down and go off like that. Okay, now you're not necessarily required to know that, but just this is just so that you have a, a basic understanding of what's going on behind the scenes, so to speak. And what we've got here is the area is changing as we change the base. And the area gradually comes down to a minimum value at this point here for this particular value of x, which is what we're going to have to find in this question. And for questions like this, the gradient at this point here is 0. Okay? If we drew a tangent to the curve, at that point the gradient that is given by dA by dx would equal 0. And this is how we approach this problem. So for part 3 of this question, okay, let me just scroll up a little. Okay, for part 3, okay, to get that stationary point, as we call it, we need to set the gradient dA by dx equal to 0. So if we say when dA by dx equals 0, we have essentially that 4x minus 32 over x squared equals 0. And to solve this equation, it's best to multiply both sides by x squared. So 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. So we have therefore 4x cubed. x squared times this term just gives us 32. And 0 times x squared well, that's zero. And what I can do now is divide through by four because four goes into each of these terms. So I get x cubed minus eight equals zero. And then let's just scroll up a bit more. Okay, I can add eight to both sides and I get x cubed equals eight and then take the cube root of 8. So x equals the cube root of 8 and we should know that that is 2. So that's telling us that when I go to the graph, okay, just up here, this value here would be x equals 2. And I've got to prove that at x equals 2, this gives us a minimum value. And there's a way of doing this. And to do that, what we need to do is carry out the second differential. And the second differential is often written by d2a by dx squared. That means we have to differentiate dA by dx again. I differentiate dA by dx, it's up here again, and I get the differential of 4x is 4, and the differential of minus 32x to minus 2, I multiply the minus 2 with the minus 32 and get plus 64, reduce the power by 1, so that's x to the minus 3. And it'd be sensible to write that as 4 plus 64 times 1 over x cubed, which would just be 64 over x cubed. Now what we do is we substitute x equals 2 into this fa um, equation and we look at whether the answer is positive or negative. So when x is 2 we get d squared a by dx squared okay, turns out to be 4 plus 64 over 2 cubed. Now 2 cubed is 8 and 64 divided by 8 is 8. 4 and 8 is 12. Now this is a positive value. It's greater than 0. And when it's a positive value, this tells us that we have a minimum value for the area. So therefore, we have justified that when x is 2, that the area is a min. A is a min. When x is 2. Okay.